Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, another entry here based on your suggestion. This one having to do with a phenomenon of sorts that occurred well over 150 years ago, but to this day still remain quite a mystery. What's interesting about him is that I actually talked about a variation of him within one of my past videos. This one having to do with the Devil's Footstep in one of my Urban Legends videos. So, now that I've created this series of videos I thought it better fits this scenario as well I'll include the link to for the uh, one for the devil's footstep because if you haven't had a chance to see it please take a look it's some pretty good information about this other phenomenon happening there the key difference though is that one only focused on one footstep this mysterious thing focused on a whole series miles and miles and miles of weird hoof-like footprints that were found in Devon England and to this day again no one seems to have a concrete answer associated with it other than the fact that people jump to the conclusion that it is from the devil himself that's why this video is called the devil's footprints because it has to do with this phenomenon that occurred there back in England or more than a 150 years ago. So here's all the information associated with this strange encounter. So you have to go back in time again, this time to around 1855, February 8th through 9th to be exact, because this either happened either across one or two nights during that particular time period in a place called East Devon and also South Devon, England, which you're looking at a picture of here as far as the locations. Uh, interesting that the locations there are split into three. I did not realize that certain parts there in England have such, I guess, multi uh, lateral locations to, to work with, but yes, if you're looking for the specific locations in question, it's East and South Devon. So here's what occurred. There was a very, very heavy snowfall that night. Nothing unusual with regards to that. But the following morning, that's when people, multiple people across all those regions started to come across these, these strange footprints that you're looking at here. What's interesting is that this wasn't just one set of footprints found there in those locations. No, there were multiple locations, dozens of people that had seen them all throughout various parts of those regions, all throughout various areas that are quite different from one another, and then all of them, in some cases, having uh, huge lengths associated with them. So some of them went on for miles and miles, others smaller amounts, but for the most part they were very much large in length in terms of miles. And in fact, a total distance that was theorized, if you were to combine everything together, was around 40 to 100 miles of footprints that were supposedly found that night or the following morning. So definitely not something like just a random circumstance. No, whatever it was that caused these footprints absolutely spent the whole night essentially just wandering around those locations. And then with these footprints, the characteristics associated with them are as follows. They're about maybe four, maybe three inches long, three inches across, and then the distance between each hoof, because that seems to be the main analysis that people have stated that it looks just like a hoof, is about eight to 16 inches apart. And then the way that they're planted, it made it seem like it came from something that was considered bipedal, i.e. standing up on two legs, rather than something involving a four-legged animal. And then these, these footprints, they went across either in a very, very straight path for most of the time, so it couldn't have been an animal because there are people that state, you know, that, that study the animals state that there's very rare circumstances that an animal would just continue in such a straight path on purpose. They would always be just be randomly just walking across a field rather than going in a straight line. But also these footprints planted themselves throughout the entire uh, width of the snow. In other words, 
they didn't just land on top of the snow and then that was it. No, they seemed to actually go all the way through the snow into the ground. So it was very distinct, nothing like any other footprints found. Another very, very fascinating thing about these footprints is that, again, they covered so many regions, so many places, and some items that are very hard to understand how it occurred. For example, some of these tracks covered houses, you know, easy enough, but the problem is the footprints would stop at one portion of the house, end up on the top of the house, let's say towards the roof, go across the roof of the house, and then continue on the bottom, and on the next side of the home. Not only that, but they would cross rivers as well. The footprints would stop in one side of a river, and then they would begin on another one. In other cases, they would go across haystacks, they would go across other obstacles, even drainage pipes, if you could believe it. Some of those drainage pipes had footprints that went straight up to them but the drainage pipe and this is where things get so bizarre the drainage pipe was only four inches tall and then it would come across the other side of the drainage pipe as well so again all uh, very interesting stuff the kind of stuff that just absolutely makes you scratch your head the more I was reading about this again uh, at the beginning I was easily just thinking oh it's an animal you know it's it's something along those lines because I saw uh, similar footprints when I was at the um, Area 51 tour and we went to one of the dry lake beds it was just filled with snow but I saw footprints and of course those were easily described as being as of a, of a, of a rabbit a hopping rabbit nearby but in this case no how do you explain the river how do you explain the drainage pipe how do you explain so easily being able to cross the top of the home and then uh, just coming across the other side and then again everything being in a straight line as opposed to just being random turns twists and turns normally associated with an animal so all very very bizarre stuff but unfortunately there has been no concrete evidence as to it because a it was snow so what can you do like you can't really capture the snow and then b uh, there was very little photographs of it so anything as far as evidence the closest thing we have are these drawings that you've been looking at but take a note on that part too because all these drawings purport came from different parts of, of, of Devon, England, and yet they're all letters, and yet they all look the same. So if this was someone, let's say, playing a prank of some sort, they would absolutely have to have covered most parts of Devon by themselves, or maybe in a group, who knows, but they would have had to have done it just that single night. Uh, in other words, to make it seem like all the footprints looked nearly the same as they do within these drawings. Otherwise, if it wasn't a group of people and if it wasn't an individual, then it leaves the only other thing that people are stating that it was some strange phenomenon of some sort, either some animal that could absolutely go across very high walls and then uh, also um, high homes and drainage pipes and so forth, but um, otherwise, that's why people think this associated with the devil himself. And there's a supernatural part, too, because that was the only time that this occurred within that specific area. Like, no one, it didn't happen before, it didn't happen afterward. So, if this was something more natural, i.e., like an animal of some sort, then whatever it was, that was the only time it made its specific appearance. There is nothing else in terms of other appearances elsewhere throughout that area so one time trick shot and you, you don't really think most animals think that way like they're not just going to appear one single time and then um, absolutely just disappear afterward before and after that occurrence but there's still a lot of debate as to what caused this thing again the aforementioned one is that it was the devil himself like he visited this location for whatever reason and then just decided to walk across it there in the dead of night uh, which would have made for an interesting interaction imagine if if this were all true and there you are working late at night and then you see this mysterious stranger just walking around how that would have worked but as far as more natural theories associated with these footprints one of them it's weird um it was inter it was weird reading this information and then thinking you know how this comes across but apparently there was a quote-unquote experimental balloon that was released uh, somewhere around that night by a place called Devonport 
dockyard. I don't know what this balloon was supposed to do, um, like why it was considered experimental, like what was its purpose, but the idea was that it had two shackles on the end of its ropes, I guess to keep it from floating away, but it was accidentally let go like I guess it got out of their hands or something and this is what caused the tracks themselves these shackles just started bobbing up and down throughout the snow as the balloon traveled throughout those regions but it begs the question how could that explain something traveling in such a purposeful straight line unless the wind actually did that and of course that's not going to happen and then also where was all this other information about this balloon like um, if if this was the case Davenport Dockyard I mean why wouldn't they state exactly what they were trying to do with this balloon and then provide proof of it later on like showcase here it is you know here's the shackles here's how easy it can create these footprints it seems to be that that the reasoning behind this is because it was hushed up because this stuff kind of uh, wrecked some areas I guess near and around those locations like windows were broken and so forth so they didn't want to necessarily have to take uh, culpability of this balloon so that's one theory and then if you go with the animal uh, theories there's the idea that it could be hopping mice because apparently the way these mice hop and the prints they leave behind they very closely resemble a, 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 a hoof of some sort and so that's why it seems to be that it's the mice but again that doesn't create the that doesn't dispel the notion of this stuff happening over if the tr thing is right 40 to 100 miles or so of mice of length of mice doing this uh, in other words mice traveling that distance within that single night and then again trying to cross over uh, actual rivers that seems to be something else there's also the idea that there was a kangaroo that apparently escaped some kind of private residence or maybe even a local zoo of some sort and that that's what this thing caused uh, with regards to the footprints but these are all theories associated with real life animals there's another one about badgers also doing this and then also rodents other rodents causing this as well finally there's the theory that it could just be mass hysteria it's the notion that something was caused by a small set of footprints but when people saw this they immediately started thinking other things that were really truly just animal tracks of some sort thinking that yes it must be tied to these footprints and that's where the report would come from of this these set of footprints happening so much elsewhere because uh, one people one group of people see these real life tracks associated with the devil's footprints and maybe in East Devon South Devon but then others I guess either trying to chime in on that popularity or thinking to themselves that they're doing the right thing and trying to make sure that hey I found some tracks too uh, but they are inadvertently pointing to the wrong thing like those could actually be true animal tracks but they just all got lumped in within these devil's footprints so all theories as to what's associated with them but again nothing has been considered a hundred percent proof as to what these things were because again no evidence has ever been uh, presented concrete evidence that showcases a, an analysis that can be done but yeah that's all the information tied to these devil's footprints this strange phenomenon this mysterious set of circumstances that occurred that fateful night in 1855 there in Devon, England. If anyone has any more information, please post those comments below. That would be really great to hear. Uh, there was also another phenomenon of source that occurred nearby trying to remember where that place was, but there was another location of source that apparently encountered these areas. I think it was called Glenarchy? Or in Glenyon. I don't know exactly where that's located, but apparently sometime a couple of months later there was something I mean I'm sorry a couple of years earlier there was something involving these footprints also bearing very similar circumstances there too so whether this was yet another visit by in this case the devil himself or another set of coincidences of animal tracks being mistaken for them who knows but again that's yet another circumstance that happened a couple of years before the devil's footprints there in Devon so alright everybody Thanks again as always. Take care.